In this vlog, we're going down to Florida, the softest place to play poker that I've ever played. Playing a $2,500 Money Maker Tour main event, 500k guaranteed. We run deep. Like and subscribe, or you're gonna lose your next three cash sessions. What are you doing? I'm just freshening up on my skills with the WSOP app, free in the mobile store, in the whatever store. He hasn't been doing that well, so he's studying. You know, I'm learning more than I thought I would. But yeah, we made it. We're about to head over there. Palm Beach Kennel Club, $2,500 entry, 500k guaranteed. What if I came home with a Greyhound? Would you like it? I like the skinny legs. They're like you. Anyway, we're here, thanks to Chris Moneymaker, to play in $2,500 main event Moneymaker Tour. We were here about a year ago with John Party. Busted on day two or whatever. I just remember being pretty sad about it. We busted. We were pretty disappointed. Pretty bummed. All right, so good news for us. We're starting at the feature table, so we don't have to remember fucking hands. We can just cheat and actually focus. That footage is on clear. I meant cheat for the vlog voiceovers that I, I don't need to write down hand histories. I don't mean regular cheat. Although, as you can see here, the first thing I do when I sit at the table is put my headphones on, which is very not allowed. But nobody told me, one and two, how the fuck am I supposed to get told my opponent's whole cards? Florida, consistently the softest place I've ever played poker. Think it's because there's many retired people here with money. And even the young, non-retired people are great to play against because they are from Florida. You start with 50K despite the commentators somehow being paid to commentate and having no clue. What's the starting stack? Do we know that? Do you know? I do not know. So, with blinds at 300, 600, 600. A few hands in, we have King Queen suited and we raise it up to 1500 under the gun. Normally you always see me min raising, but we're above 80 bigs here, so we go a little bigger. Anyway, we raise to 1500. Greg calls with a mystery hand for now. From the cutoff, he makes the call. And so does Mike in the big blind, an oddly in shape older guy. Flop comes, king eight three. Nice flop for us. The big blind checks, and I just as default on a vast majority of boards, oversimplify my strategy out of position, especially multi-way to just always check, even when we have top pair like here. So we go ahead and do that, we check. Greg snap bets 3K, and this looks strong enough. But now Mike, the weirdly looking in shape old guy, raises to 10K, which is like half his stack. Now, what would you guys do here? There's a bet and a raise in front of you. Well, it's taken me way, way, way longer than I'd like to admit to learn this, but this spot is a clear easy fold given the ages of the other players, the action, all this shit. It may not seem it, but I just so rarely have the best hand here. Fuck this. We snap fold so quick like a wizard, the commentators. Okay, well, I have to call shenanigans. Back onto Greg, he snap jams. Now I'm even more patting myself on the back. Mike folds. His cards never read in the card reader. So I later said to him, you had eights that hand? And he snap said, yeah, thinking that his hand was on the reader. And so I like mistake angled him into telling the truth. Anyway, this vlog is gonna take like three hours at this pace if I just talk for this long about each fucking hand. So we have to move along. We miss a flop with king 10 off, miss with six, seven suited, raise king three suited for no reason, raise king seven suited in early position, being a little degen, we get three bet, and now being real degen, decide to still peel, should not call a three bet out of position with this hand, but I don't know, sometimes you just gotta minus EV it up a little bit. But it comes like ace high flop, so we just have to check fold. A little bit later, my hand doesn't read on the reader, but Jerry Wong raises to 2100. It folds to the small blind who jams for like 36 bigs. And we have sort of a decision with ace queen suited in the big blind. It's a bit of a think, but with an older guy jamming and especially with Jerry behind, we're just forced to fold again. And thank God we did, because as you, you can see, like one third of our outs are dead in his hand. Later, we're in a pot, multi way with top pair. As I lead turn into a better hand, the commentators pretend they don't know who I am. Did I say ACR? Little badge you got on there? his patch, yeah, on his little shoulder there. Oh, look at him. We got some big pros, pros. Okay. I know, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. We end up getting bailed out by a River King. I don't remember what I was thinking in game, why I checked, but it seems pretty stupid now seeing the whole cards. I win a little guy with Jack eight versus Ace seven. When we both have like middle pair, or whatever. I raise with Ace King off apparently, face a three bet and a cold call, and then just snap fold. Problem is I 100% did not have Ace King. Oh, I have zero recollection of what hand I actually did have. I'm certain this is a graphic error. Commentators though. Brian gets out of the way. Fold of the Ace King. Well, he was in bad position. Great fold. 100%. Meanwhile, it would be possibly top five worst folds in the history of poker, if true. Now watching the stream back, feels like I play too many hands. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, confirm. 44% VPIP is way too deep. Are you deep. crazy? Although Jerry Wong mind? was really good and he's second, whatever. Blinds up now, 400, 800, 800. Folds to the button. He raises to 2,200. 
the small blind calls, and we have ace five off in the big blind. We want to spice it up, so we three bet, pick up some chips. So as you can see, we played about 800 small pots and end up with 10K less than starting. We have 40K at dinner break with the great barstool Mincy. Mr. DePaula, Ryan, dinner break. How are we doing in this tournament? Earth to Ryan. What the hell is he doing? Oh, it looks like he's busy playing. Number one free to play poker game globally. WSOP on his phone. Oh, hey, Chris. Oh, hey, number one ACR Team Pro, Ron DePaulo. How are you? Uh, good, Chris. How are you? You look a little stagnant there. I'm just in shock and awe of your beauty and how you're the best, way better than me. I'm Chris Moneymaker. Fuck you. Come to the Moneymaker store. <laughs> That's a good promo. Back to the table. We got like four more hours before we bag. But anyway, we only have 40K off 50K start. So we got to fucking, we got work to do. Back from dinner break with 40K in our stack. Stream is over. We have 40 bigs now. The blinds are 500, 1K, 1K. We're under the gun and look down at ace 10 of diamonds. We raise it to 2K. Folds to the small blind who three bets to 6,500. We're suited and in position. And it's a small three bet-ish, whatever. We call. Flop. Hot garbage. 732 rainbow. He bets like 10K into the 14K or whatever we fold down to 32K in our stack. All good. It folds to us in the hijack. We look down at queen 10 off. It is bottom of range, but it's still a raise. So we raise to 2K. Cut off flats. And the big blind calls. Three ways to a flop. 7,500 in the pot. Flop comes. Jack, jack five. This hand's over, right? Well, not exactly. Everybody checks the flop. And now the turn comes a nine. We have an up and down straight draw. The big blind checks and we decide to, you know, make our bluff worth it. We want to fold out ace highs and shit like this. So we bet 4,500 into the 7,500. The cutoff calls and the big blind folds. So now we're heads up to the turn, 17K in the pot, 24K in our stack. But we got to proceed with caution because this call looks very strong in game. And now because I bet relatively big, he wouldn't just float with ace X like I said. Anyway. We gotta be really cautious or just hit the fucking eight on the river, which we do. We now have the nut straight. How do I get paid? Like I said, 17K in the pot, 24K in our stack. I'm aware in game how strong his call looks on the turn. I think that he, that means that his range is strong enough that if we check, he'll have to value bet a ton of hands and I can check raise. So we go ahead and do that. We check, he bets 10K. And we actually then think about calling maybe, but that wasn't the plan, bruh. So we jam. But uh, he snap calls and he has Jack 8 for a river boat. <laughs> GG, fuck. That's it for today, but we will be back. I got a little too greedy, but check raise seemed good. I mean, if I had bet any raise, I probably would have called anyway, maybe. So I don't know, whatever. That sucks for it to not go well. This is the game sometimes. Dogs of the vlog. Wow, there's so much to do with so many variants to choose from. What was the other app I just found on your phone? Urban Dictionary. <laughs> he has the Urban Dictionary app on the phone so you can communicate with me better. So I'm here with my dad and we're going to back to the Money Maker main event. What is that? What are you doing? Oh, he's playing the WSOP app. Wow, dad. Is this because you're trying to get to know me better? It's either all in our fold because they bet more than you have oh. in your stack. Going with the fours. I got pets. I got a pet. Of course I'm going. See, this is what happened with Sohep too. It's like, I need these people to act in the sketch for WSOP and then they actually just start playing the app and enjoying it, and then they don't listen to me. So there's a straight feed of flush? Here, you can always check if you forget up here and you just go to hand rank and then it'll remind you. Oh, okay, so of course, Royal Flush, I need that. So yeah, we should get over there. We got to register before the first hand gets dealt or whatever. But after playing this, it looks like you got you to gotta just check more until you, you see more cards. I'll do that today, I'll check more. It's bad advice, but it's funny. He won't even hang out with me like that. Like we just filmed it for the sketch for the ad, but now he's actually just sitting out here playing. <laughs> oh, he tipped the dealer. Unnecessary. So you know the deal, bro. We're gonna have to win the first flip. We're gonna have 20 bags hour levels. It's a good structure. Maybe here I'm barking today. Oh, look at this. Come full circle. We used to race dogs, now it's dogs of the fog everywhere. Look at all these dogs in the fog. It's like the reparations for racing dogs all those years. Hey Chris, hey Ron, good luck today. Day two, 90 people left out of 214. We're gonna max late reg this fucking jump off, putting up the 2,500 again. And in return, we get 20 big blinds and a dream. It's a 500K guaranteed tournament. And there ended up being a small overlay. So, you know, that helps us justify a re-entry. But let's spin. Early on, we raise queen nine off from the cutoff, C bet, win some, then re-jam with ace king off and win some more. But just like that, we have 71K. 
There's 120k for first, 27 people paid, but all that's for later. That's a long time from now. We get a little saucy double barrel pocket fours on King Jack 10 9 and win. Fuck up a hand with Ace 10 off. Have to fold Ace Queen on Ace 7 5 3 2 and the big line leads, blah, blah, blah. We're just floating around like a roach, you know? Fast forward a little bit. We have 65K and we've made it all the way from 90 people starting the day down to just 61. I mean, this is the benefit of max late regging. You get a couple hands going your way and you're close to the money. We open in early position with Ace Queen off of our 24 big blinds. We get three bets by a competent looking player and uh this is a hand we don't always have to go with but i'm i just jam i do the four bet jam and luckily snap folds we pick up a little chips and we win another pot king 10 suited blind versus blind now we have double starting stack 58 people left 101k great script to start the fucking day blinds are now 1500 3k 3k like i said 101k in our stack Kazpav raises from the hijack to 6500 we are next to act in the cutoff and look down at black aces. Now I know most of yous with three bet here, but that's because you're soft pussies. Unlike me, I'm a GTO G Lord. So I know that off this stack depth, we're supposed to trap with aces. We could actually do both, but whatever. You get to just actually call with aces a lot. So we go ahead and just do that. Just cool. The big blind calls as well. Now we're going three ways to a flop. Instantly I'm like, fuck, I hope I don't regret being, being real sneaky. 24K in the pot, flop comes. Queen, five, two, rainbow with one heart. They both check to me. I gotta get value, obviously. I bet 7K, a little less than one third pot. Big blind folds, Kazpav calls from the hijack. He has us covered. 38K in the pot, turn comes, two of hearts, bringing in the backdoor flush draw, also pairs the board. He checks again, and obviously we bet again. This time, 21K into the 38K, setting up a pot size river jam. There's too many hands he's gonna call with to name. You should understand why I'm value betting here, blah, 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 blah. All right, so going to the river. 80K in the pot, 75K in our stack. River comes 2% scary, it's a seven of hearts. So if he had some backdoor flush draw, which we unblock maybe, but it's really a tame ass board. He just has king queen off type of shit so often here. He checks to us and we basically jam. We bet 65K of our 75K hoping to make it look like a bluff that I'm trying to preserve chips, but I don't actually do this when I'm bluffing, so I need to balance that, I'm realizing now. He folds, either way, nice win, 135K in our stack, yay. So yeah, 50 left, yo, it could be a sweat, could become what could become. I'll tell you what, I had aces that hand. You had aces? Yeah, I was trapping, yeah. yeah okay. Mincy with the fresh gear, he's got the fresh gear. Moneymaker merch. We win a pot that I don't know how it got so big for no reason. When we had king eight suited from the small blind, we win with middle pair. Now we got 166K in our stack. We win a couple of nice little juicers with ace jack offsuit. And at this time, we're getting moved to the feature table. We're down to 46 people. And just like this, we have 230K in our stack, 58 bigs. This is fucking sick. Let's go to the stream table with Mincy and Jack. Honestly, where we belong. With queen nine suited, we steal a little pot off Mincy. We pay a fucking guy off with pocket nines like a dickhead. Now we're down to 40 people. Blinds are up 2,500, 5K, 5K. We get ace 10 off back to back hands. Lose one, win one. Three bet with pocket jacks. Lose another ace 10 versus Mincy. Lose a little guy with pocket twos. Blah, blah, blah. Down to 38 people left. Now we have uh, 196K or 40 bigs. This hand, it folds to us in the cutoff. We have a bad hand, but still bottom of range. So we're gonna open ace six off suit. So we raise it up. Both blinds call, Mincy and the other dude. And this whole hand probably isn't that good out of me besides the pre-flop raise. But so the flop comes and they check to us. And honestly, in game, my thinking was flawed a little. I was thinking, I wanna win a pot. I mean, I guess I also was thinking Mincy will probably overfold, but whatever. So we see bet. Unfortunately, they both call. Maybe we can win the pot later. Maybe it'll come diamond diamond. Turn comes a jack, which is a horrible card for me. Either of them have so many more middle pairs than I, and I wouldn't see bet a jack multi-way on the flop really often, so I would check. So when they check to me, I check back with not really a plan to bluff the river, but the uh, river comes a nine. They both check to me again, and I just can't fucking help myself. I'd way prefer for them to have the ace of diamonds, so I have bad removal, but... We YOLO it up. Heart's racing. Let's just go for it. About 45K. We have to sit there for a while, but it finally works. Big relief. Now we're going to break. A little nice, another fucking juicer. All right, so it's still going well. That bluff was really dumb, but we have 240K. Like 37 left, 27 paid. Next break. Let's go. Came here max late reg, which is a little bit of hope. Let's fucking get in the money. 
We raise king nine of diamonds from under the gun plus one. Other guy three bets us. And this is mostly a call. With ICM, maybe we can fold, but we have a pretty good hand. We call, heads up to a flop. We flop a gut shot. Not good, but not bad. We check to him, and he bets kind of big for a three bet pot. Either way, I think this is a good spot to check raise. I don't like just folding when we flop a gut shot because our hand is too strong to just like totally bail on, I think. But just calling sucks, and it's hard to proceed out of position, especially if he's going to fire again on the turn. So another benefit of check raising is that they'll end up checking back the turn, and you get to see both the turn and river. We don't need to go big here to prove our point or like, you know, realize our fold equity, I think. So we do go ahead and check raise. Small, but serves the same purpose, like I said. But unfortunately, as you see, he has the perfect hand. He's just gonna go with always. So he jams, we have to fold. In game, in the moment, I am fucking needlessly pissed at myself. I'm furious. I probably have the top five worst mental games in poker. So I like was ready to jump off fucking bridge. But in hindsight, and even after checking in GTO, I think it's fine. Maybe not with ICM. Regardless, it's a big pot to lose. It stings, especially as we approach the money. But on we go. We still have 23 bigs. Who thought we'd be here? I don't fucking know. It's fucking dickhead. Limps under the gun. Why is he dickhead? Because it folds us in the big blind, and now we're forced to take a flop with 10-5 off. You know, limping against someone like me who can't help themselves in some spots is an effective strategy. But here, we smash the flop. Smash it. We flop middle pair. We don't know we smashed it until it goes check, check. Because once he checks back, I know he doesn't have a queen. And I mostly can rule out the monsters he may be trapping with his under the gun limp type of shit. So, on the turn, we're going to value bet slash block. You know, get some value, let us get the showdown. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying. So we make the bet, he calls. River, fuck us. He hits the jack, it goes check, check. He has two pair. What are you going to do? Blinds go up a short while later like this we have 12 bigs not good 35 people left maybe 27 paid the eliminations have stalled for a little while but we're still close the min cash is $3,700 the big min cash we pick up ace nine suited in the hijack with our 12 bigs and we're ready to go all in but the low jack goes all in with his 10 big blinds ahead of us and in game it feels like a closer spot than it really is not really sure what to do. Remember, we're nearing the bubble, as I've said 500 fucking times. I don't know why I wrote that in the script again. But anyway, we ultimately make the right choice and fold. It would have been nearly all our chips. With ICM, it's too many, even if it's chip EV call. We'll live to fight another day and have our own fold equity. So a few hands later, we're under the gun, again, with our 11 and a half bigs. And we look down at a six of clubs. With ICM, this may not necessarily be, it's close, it's close. This is all on the edge but we're gonna go with it. Every time there's a choice, I don't know if you guys notice, it's like, oh, I could go either way and we just go the aggressive fucking punt gamble way. Regardless, we basically go all in, raising 70K of our 93K. I, I should leave a little bit less behind. Regardless, if you think our jam is bad, Johnny decides to fucking show me up with horrible play and makes a horrendous call here with King Jack suited. Very, very highly retarded move. We're heads up to a flop for a tournament life, basically. We flop middle pair. Doesn't really matter now. We're jamming anyway. At least we sucked out on a better ace X. He calls. He flips over the king first, which gives us a ton of hope, never thinking the other fucking card would be a jack in a million years. But then he shows it. Can we stay alive? Can we suck out? Can we please, 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 after all this, played for two days. We're here. Just like that, we're out. The money maker, 2,500 main event. Time to find some young Floridians and do some fentanyl. The king nine hand was awful, but you know what? I played the other hands real well. Let's not. This is the business we've chosen. Tournaments, man. That's the pain of them. You know? How does that guy call with King Jack? You know what? Fuck him. Let me be like how mute. Dumbass. Calls my fucking 10, 11 big shove for him. Thanks for money maker tour for having me out and download WSOP. The app, Great Play Money app, link in, in the bio. Get 1 million free chips in game if you use the promo code Ryan1M. Ugh, I'm miserable. <laughs>